We now know that the elite schools focused on fundamental mathematical principles and the derivation of mathematical solutions to practical problems. Only through such an approach could French society progress. But what about those people with practical knowledge and training? Now, who were they? Remember that in the old regime, these people were artisans, members of guilds, which were very conservative organizations and intensely protective of their knowledge. Also remember that in the 17th century, the philosophes and Diderot's encyclopedia in particular had called attention to the useful arts as evidence for human control over nature. But that during the 18th century, the useful arts were overshadowed by the rise of the math-based schools. Well, an interest in the useful arts had not disappeared. It is less known that during the French Revolution, the national convention that established the École Polytechnique also established in that same year a conservatory for industrial arts, the Conservatoire des Arts, des arts et Métiers. As the historian Jan uh, Sebestic explains, the conservatory included both a museum and a system of instruction. Its establishment was, quote, I'll quote him, meant to spread the technological knowledge among the less educated, mainly the workers. Its goal was to train technicians, not to prepare future engineers, end quote. From its founding, the professors and teachers in this conservatory had close contacts with private industry. The conservatory itself fell into decline after 1812, but the idea of developing higher schools for the application of scientific or math-based knowledge to the industrial arts took off. So let's now turn to look at the emergence of, of, of actually two other levels of engineering training in the hierarchy of engineering education, and then use that understanding to, to explore the evolving hierarchy of workplaces, especially involving the distinction or the separation between working in the state and working for industry.